Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bunch of disappointing products. I've done these videos in the past on my channel. You guys seem to respond to them pretty well. You seem to enjoy them. And honestly, as much as I find it fun to film my favorites, I also enjoy filming my disappointing products because this is a great way to steer you guys away from problematic products, products that aren't worth your money. When I'm mentioning something I don't like, something really bad, I also want to give you guys some advice or a better option, a better alternative, whether it's the same price or cheaper, it just works better and is more worth your money. So if you guys are interested to see what I have been disappointed by lately, a lot of it is drugstore. It's mostly drugstore, but I'll also link and list below a whole bunch of products that really do work and are worth your money. So if you guys want to find out everything I've been disappointed by, then please just keep watching. So the first thing I wanted to mention is a cleansing water. This is by Garnier. This is their micellar cleansing water. It's an all-in-one removing makeup cleansing and refreshing liquid product. I recently found out that it has an ingredient in it that is not good for your skin. That is not good for your health. It's actually a very dangerous ingredient. It's an ingredient that can possibly cause cancer and it's called PHMB. And I've learned recently that PHMB is found in a lot of makeup removing products because I guess it helps to remove that makeup faster, but it can cause cancer. That is not something I wanna put on my face or on my body. And I don't know if I can actually pronounce this word, it's kinda of hard, but PHMB stands for polyminopropyl biguanide, and it's a product that is a preservative that is supposed to help remove makeup off your face, but it can cause cancer. It's dangerous, I don't like that I'm gonna be putting something onto my face that can be cancerous. Unfortunately, I've learned that a lot of makeup removing products have this ingredient PHMB in it. So definitely do your research before buying a makeup removing micellar water type product like this because I wouldn't purchase it if it had PHMB. I've heard that there's a new one from L'Oreal that supposedly does not have this ingredient in it. I don't own it, so I'm not really sure, but I would stick to makeup removing wipes or even Bioderma. I believe that Bioderma does not have PHMB and I will definitely do some research before I link a better alternative for you guys below but don't pick this up because it's just it's too dangerous your skin is important your body your health is important pass on this pick up a makeup wipe pick up some other kind of makeup removing cleanser don't get this micellar water this next product is something that I picked up from Walgreens just to give it a whirl it's the studio 35 beauty textured cotton rounds this comes with 80 it costs a little bit under $4, I believe, but these broke apart so quickly. I feel like they waste a lot of product if you soak them with any kind of cleanser or toner. It feels a little bit rough in the under eye area. For $4, you can get 70 of these from Sephora. You do get 10 more here, but the Sephora ones work so well that I can literally use either side on my eyes or on my face and it won't even break or dissolve. Definitely worth the four bucks. Pass in the Studio 35 Beauty from Walgreens and pick up the ones from Sephora. They're are so much better. This next product is a skincare related item and it's adorable. It's the Panda's Dream So Cool Eye Stick from Tony Moly, I believe. I picked this up at Ulta a long time ago and it's a cooling eye stick that you are supposed to blend underneath of your eyes to reduce any puffiness, any tiredness under that eye area to kind of cool the skin under there, wake it up, tighten it up, and depuff. This does absolutely nothing. I remember using it the first time and thinking that I liked it because I think I liked the packaging more than what the product actually did because I recently found this kind of pushed away in a drawer, decided to play with it again, and I did a real test. I woke up early in the morning one day, I had really tired eyes, I felt very puffy, and I applied it underneath of my right eye, and I didn't apply anything under my left eye, I left it on for a couple hours, I went back to the mirror, and I didn't see any difference. My eyes were both still puffy, this one wasn't looking any better, this did nothing. Very cute packaging, it's a cute decor for the top of your vanity or in your bathroom, but the product doesn't do anything, so I don't recommend this. There are better depuffing eye creams and just a whole bunch of other things on the market. I really like one from Pixi, which I'll be linking below, but this isn't worth it whatsoever. This next product is something that actually came in an Ipsy bag maybe two months ago, and I got really, really excited because it's a beauty blending type sponge and it came in this little packaging it says the brand is called mint pear the name is adorable the fact that it's pink like a beauty blender adorable didn't really have high hopes because ipsy costs ten dollars a month so I thought this would be really really cheapy and like a really bad product and it is a really bad product but surprisingly enough I went on the website and this retails for twenty dollars just like the beauty blender except that when you soak this underwater it doesn't expand it doesn't get larger it's not very squishy it's very very, very dense. Basically when I wet this, it stays the exact same size. It's kind of uncomfortable on the skin because it's very dense. It's very tight, doesn't get really soft and bouncy, and it picks up so much of the foundation or any concealer product you're putting onto your face. 
any creamy product you're trying to blend out on your face with this, 50 to 60% of the product gets soaked up by the sponge. Such a waste. And I didn't clean it on purpose so you guys could see how much this thing sucks up. Don't like it. I'm just really, really disappointed. I just... I'm glad I didn't spend the $20 on this. I recommend the one from Real Techniques. That one is so good, the Miracle Complexion Sponge. It's an orange sponge that's round, just like the Beauty Blender. It expands when you wet it. It's very squishy and mushy and really easy to bounce around on your face, blends everything out, does not soak up too much product. Love it. And the fact that it has a slanted edge to it, I like that even more than the Beauty Blender. And those retail for under $6 or two for 10. So do not pick up Mint Pear. If you've seen this brand around, I'd pass on it. If you're gonna spend the $20, then buy the Beauty Blender. This next product is a hydrating day cream. I have a lot of hydrating night creams, but I don't have very thick, intense day creams. So when I saw that Derma E included this in a package with a serum and a chapstick, I was really excited. I love their serum. It's a hydrating, plumping serum. I mentioned it in my January favorites, I believe last week, but this day cream, Yes, it's hydrating. It's very thick, as you'll see in the clip in the close-up. But when I put this onto my face, I tried it before bed because I do have kind of combo to oily skin, so I didn't want to put it in the day. I thought it might be too much, so I used it for night. And when I cleaned my face and then applied this on top, it literally sat on my skin. It didn't soak in. I woke up in the morning and I still felt this weird kind of powdery sensation on my skin. It looked a little bit white because it created a very strong white cast. It was sitting on my skin, it wasn't sinking in, it wasn't hydrating, it wasn't plumping. This is not a good product, at least for my skin type. It didn't seem to do anything, it just kind of sat there, was not impressed, and I didn't even like the way it smelled either. So I will definitely be giving this away. Maybe my mom will like it, I don't know, but it didn't work out for me at all. So these next two products are primers that I just, I don't know, I really don't like them. They've been sitting in my collection for quite a while, but I recently decided that I don't use them and they needed to go into this video because I'm really not impressed with either one of them. So the first one is the Maybelline Master Prime Blur and Illuminate number 200. It has a little pink labeling to it. It's really cute, it smells great, it has that SPF in it. It's supposed to give an illumination to your skin. It does that, it gives you a little bit of dewiness under your foundation, but I don't feel like this fills in any pores. I don't feel like this preps my skin for makeup. I don't feel like this prolongs my makeup. It kind of gives this little powdery sensation on my face before I apply makeup, so I feel like it kind of makes makeup apply a little bit chunky, a little bit cakey, and I think this is like $10 or $15. I'm not really sure. Not worth it. I love the Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser from Maybelline a lot more, and that's under $7. I don't like this one at all. And then the other one is the NYX Angel Veil. I hear people talking a lot about this, raving about this primer. I don't like it because it's a very thick and creamy white product that stays white on my face, and I feel like if I don't blend it in well, the makeup is going to have a little bit of white overcast to it. I don't know how to describe it. It's very thick. I don't know. I just don't really like this product. I don't know why people like it so much. I'm not a fan. This next product I mentioned in my January favorites, not as a favorite, but as what I was wearing and what I thought of it so far. And since then, I've been wearing this for about, what I would say, maybe two weeks now, and I don't like it. I do have oily to combination skin. This may be a better product for dry skin. I didn't like it because within, I would say, two to three hours, it was already breaking down around my nose and on my nose. I felt like 80 to 90% of the foundation was gone and you could see redness peeking through. I looked very oily in my T-zone areas. It just looked really kind of gross on the skin. I didn't like it. it. Didn't give me a natural glow. It gave me a full-on greasy glow. So not a fan of this product and this is a 12 or $13 foundation. So if you have oily to combo skin, I would pass on this. Maybe try their infallible pro matte versus their pro glow or even better, the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation is fantastic. This next product is another skincare item that I really don't like. I think it's overpriced and overhyped and it's the Glossier Coconutbalm.com Universal Solve. I have it in coconut, smells great, but I don't feel like this does a great job. It, pulls out very, very thick. It's really, really hard to kind of squeeze this product out of the tube. And then when I go to apply it to my lips, I feel like it just sits on my lips. It's just sitting there. It's gliding on there. It's not hydrating it. This was a $12 product that I think isn't worth it. I much, much prefer if I'm going to spend the money, I'd rather get the Fresh Advanced Sugar Therapy Lip Treatment. It's, I don't know if it's $14 or $15. I'm not really sure how much this costs. I got this at Sephora. I still have half of the product left and I've been using this for a really long time. This one smells like lemons and it does an amazing job of hydrating and plumping my lips. I apply this a lot on my lips before bed and wake up with super soft, 
moisturized, not cracked lips. It's a great product. This one, on the other hand, I feel like I wake up and it's still kind of sliding and gliding on my lips. It hasn't really done anything for my lips, so I don't know why people love this. Let me know in the comment box below if you own this and you like it. Maybe I'm not using it correctly. Should I be warming it up between my fingers before applying it? I don't know. It's just very thick and waxy. I wasn't impressed. And then the last products are highlights. Both are cream highlights that I don't like for two different reasons. So the first one I recently, recently picked up. These are the Jordana Glow and Go Creamy Strobing Sticks. I picked up light and medium and these look beautiful, but they do not do anything. I swatched them when I got home and I realized that these don't really do much. They don't really show up on the hand. Then I put them onto my face and I felt like they gave me the most natural, the most subtle glow that was almost too natural. You couldn't even see it. If you're looking for something so incredibly natural, like you just want to put on some moisturizer, you want to put a little glow on those high points, maybe you'd like this product. But for me, I feel like it wasn't intense enough. Luckily, it was affordable. They were about $4.99 a piece. I may use them to prime my eyeshadows with and set with a powder on top of because as a cream highlight, I don't feel like they did anything. In fact, when I put powder highlight on top of them, it took these to the fifth level. They just look so much better. So maybe they will work better for that to kind of prep your highlight with and then apply powder highlight on top of, but alone, I wasn't impressed whatsoever, so pass. And then the last one is a highlight from ColourPop. I love their highlights. They're amazing. I have a bunch of them, but this one in particular called Highly Wasted. I don't like it because of the shade. It's a very metallic, peachy, orangey pink that I feel it's too metallic for a blush, and it's definitely too orangey and too pinky for a highlight. It's just too obvious. I felt like this one in particular was really hard to blend out as well. I've used it sometimes as an eyeshadow base or just an all over lid shade and I like it better like that. But as far as a highlighting shade, I think this color is just not very flattering. I'm not a fan of this one and highly wasted. So this wraps up my disappointing products. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A lot of this was new drugstore makeup that I'd recently picked up, purchased, and played with and didn't like. So hopefully this will save you guys a couple of dollars and I will be sure again to list all of my better alternatives and options below so you guys can check them out and try out a better product than some of these that disappointed me. Thanks again for watching and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. And please, please, please request more videos thinking of doing some more makeup collection and beauty room tour type videos so let me know if you want to see more of that and definitely request more videos below i will see you guys in my next video thanks for watching Mwah. bye